Hey guys, we're back in the kitchen and we've got this whole beef tenderloin from DSR Farms and we're going to butcher it up. And I've got something special towards the end of the video you're not going to want to miss, so stay tuned. I feel like a lot of people might get intimidated when they have this much meat that they're wanting to cut steaks out of, but it's really a pretty simple process. Right now I'm just removing some of this silver skin connective tissue and then I'm going to cut this one piece off here because it's got some connective tissue in it too. I like to use a fillet knife for this just because it's a good sharp knife and it's easy to kind of manipulate and get good precise cuts out of. My end goal here is just to get as many steaks as I can out of this. Obviously, if you want to do like a beef wellington or something, you want to leave like that center uh, eight inches or so that's all nice and even, you can. That's perfectly fine, but I'm trying to get as many steaks out of this as I can. So I follow this like tail up to where it's about as thick as I want my steaks to start being, and then I cut that off and set that aside. And then the great thing about cutting your own steaks is you can make them as thick as you want. I like to cut them about an inch thick or so because then when you tie them, they'll squeeze up just a little bit and you'll be right between an inch and an inch and a half, which is perfect for me. I was able to get eight really nice steaks out of this and then I cut two more little kid steaks because I've got a little kid, so you know how it is. So now we're on to everything else that didn't make a steak and we're just gonna cube these up into roughly one inch cubes, maybe one by two inch cubes. And these are gonna be great for beef tips or kebabs or fajitas or anything that you would use small pieces of meat. It's still super tender because it's the same cut, but I've got something special in mind, so watch this. Just hit these with a little bit of salt and a little bit of garlic powder and mix that in. And in a hot cast iron skillet, I've got some browned butter and I'm just gonna hit the outside of all these really quick. They're still gonna be raw. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a crust on the outside. After I pull those out in the same skillet, I just throw some mushrooms and let them start cooking down. I didn't have any beef stock, but I had some coffee left over, so I deglazed the bottom of the skillet with that and just let that reduce a little bit. And once they cook down, I just hit up with a good tablespoon of flour and then cook that through.
once the flour cooks, I add about a cup, maybe a cup and a half of that coffee back to it, just to give it, you know, a gravy thing going on. But I want this to be really thick, so once it comes up to a bowl, I just let it get good and thick there. And once it gets as thick as I want, I just kill the heat and then throw the meat back in there and just kind of let it soak up some of that goodness. Onto a floured surface, I just roll out a whole can of just canned crescent rolls and then I cut each triangle in half. Take one of these pieces of meat, stick it in there, and just wrap it up good and seal up the edges. Got some hot oil over here and I'm just going to deep fry these things for about five minutes till the outside's good and golden brown and take them off and set them on a paper towel and let them rest a little bit. So I'm calling these beef tip wellingtons and they are legitimately the best beef tenderloin I've ever eaten. I know no one would buy an entire beef tenderloin to cut up like this and deep fry it, but if they did, I would hope that they invited me over to help them eat it. These are fantastic and I hope y'all got something out of the butcher techniques and stuff and if you did, leave me a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and check out me cooking these steaks in about a month. See y'all. Thanks for watching.